They all say, just tell people your boundaries, stand up for and demand your rights. And then they'll stop doing the behavior and saying the things that hurt. But hello, you and I both know this doesn't really work. Sometimes the person you're trying to make a boundary with just does the same thing even worse, especially in abusive relationships. Or it puts a strain on the relationship that wasn't there before. The other person may feel attacked, misunderstood, and even hurt. And of course, this wasn't your intention. On the other hand, there are people who are self-aware, conscientious, and kind-hearted who will listen to and honor your boundaries. This is like a breath of fresh air, and the relationship is restored. And yet, on the other hand, you still might have unexpected emotional responses. On the one hand, you might feel self-righteous. I made my needs to be known. Or on the other hand, if you're a nice girl, you might even feel guilty for asserting your boundaries. You are listening to The Goddess Archetype Code with your host, Erica Randolph, the intuitive counselor and licensed trauma therapist who uses myth, music, and meditation to support emotional healing. Disclaimer, this isn't intended as mental health therapy. Looking for the light, it's a daily fight and things go bump in the night. News of the day is outrageous, that's what the mad folks say. Who told you that you had sinned? We are divided, divided within. This is the third episode on Boundaries. In the first episode, we talked about how not having good boundaries can leave us feeling exhausted. We saw that boundaries are directly connected to our style of communication. Often we have weak boundaries because of indirect communication. Perhaps we don't feel free to say just what we mean. We also spoke of internal communication, in other words, how we speak to ourselves. Our internal ability to keep promises and commitments to ourselves and to carve out ways to support personal values, which is the foundation of boundary making. This leads into being rather than doing, like we spoke in the first episode. Being our authentic selves instead of that fake, nice, inauthentic self, so that we can actually be known for who we are. In the second episode, we spoke about the types of boundaries, sort of a Boundaries 101. We can have leaky boundaries which drain our resources as we give too much to others, or rigid boundaries that keep us closed off and inaccessible. And of course, right in the middle, healthy boundaries, not papa bear, baby bear, but mama bear, healthy boundaries. Plus, we learned that there are general areas of boundaries. We have physical, emotional, mental, sexual, and material boundaries. And we spoke of the historical background and the fact that our cultural conditioning from childhood has a direct influence in how we manifest effective or ineffective boundaries. Terry Cole calls this our boundary blueprint. Our families of origin shape our communication styles and how we respond to difficult situations. I'll go more in depth in another episode on the legacy of trauma, a term coined by Janina Fisher to describe the deeper connection with trauma. We also talked about the role of codependency, and I like this definition of codependency that I got from Terry Cole's book, Boundary Boss. Um, I changed the gender, but a condition where a person is compelled to do things for the people in their life that they should be doing for themselves, right? This is definitely a case of leaky boundaries. 
And then I left you with an exercise from Gabor Mate, his exercise called Compassionate Inquiry. Well, today I want to go a little bit deeper into foundational awarenesses that we need to have in order to build healthy boundaries. And I believe there are two compassionate awarenesses that are important to start with as we begin to develop healthy boundaries. The first one is the compassionate acceptance of our own inner feelings and fears. And the second is a compassionate curiosity for others. <clears throat> so the compassionate acceptance of our own in, inner feelings or fears. Let's go a little deeper into that. You know, my motto or what I stand for is radical self-love. And so this, I believe, is the foundation of boundaries and all kinds of things in our lives that we deal with. So how do you practice radical self-love? Well, radical self-love is, um, well, a radical concept of how to truly have love and compassion for yourself. It is a deep acceptance of all the parts of you. This includes the um, quote-unquote ugly or embarrassing parts. In Jungian psychology, they call these your shadow parts. When we notice these parts showing up, you know, perhaps it's anger, spite, jealousy, scorn, disgust, telling lies, or even things like procrastination and over-underworking or, or lack of self-care. I mean, the list goes on and on. You will have certain parts come up that are unique to your experience, but we all have our own shadow parts that are not pleasant and loving. Often, we try to ignore them. But in this episode, I urge you to face these shadow parts with a radicalized love. So we start in the here and now, which is a Gestalt term, and we use a Rogerian sense of compassion to be deeply curious about what is going on inside for you at this moment. As we said in the first episode, in the two steps of being, we want to name the emotion and what's going on inside for you. Sometimes due to family historical dynamics, it can be confusing, and true feelings can be hiding under seemingly more accept acceptable or maybe more habitual emotions. You know, maybe you're prone to anger, prone to annoyance or you know there's all kinds of different things or you know some people can just be prone for ignoring everything <laughs> so notice where you feel this in your body when you see an emotion coming up for you notice where is it in your body think about where it is that's where it lives in your body you know or you might do a certain movement or a body stance like slouching or holding your hands or your head in a certain way. Maybe you chew your lip, bite your fingernails, or rub a certain spot. So just notice these parts, these places in your body with compassion and curiosity. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to, breathe, to keep breathing. Yes, take a breath. At this point, if you're allowing yourself to sit with the feelings, naming the feelings, and with the body sensations, you may want to use Gabor Mate's compassionate inquiry to begin to question what the meaning is behind the feelings. What do the shadow parts want to tell you? Are they trying to protect you from something? You know, just a little word about those poor shadow parts. You know, they don't know how to keep their cool. That's why they need your love and compassion. But they really need for you to understand what's really going on for them. 
So when you take time to develop love and compassion for these parts, you're actually creating love and compassion for yourself. Because these are parts of you, the shadow parts. They're based on your experiences of the world from childhood up to the present moment. You know, sometimes, sometimes even a sense of forgiveness towards your parts and towards yourself can be helpful. You know, when you sit there and you think about the embarrassing things that you might have said or done and forgiving yourself, forgiving that part. You know, maybe it was a jealous part that made you do something you regret. But notice, what is that jealous part telling you? You know, I believe all our emotions have a reason to be there. And there might be a specific reason why that jealousy is there. It could be your inner wisdom, your intuition telling you something. As you develop compassion, acceptance, and forgiveness towards yourself, you are then able to dive into these important questions. What do you want? (laughs) Who are you? What are your values? These questions are crucial to being able to know and establish your personal boundaries. Because, you see, your boundaries are based on what is important to you. I love the statement, know thyself. This was Socrates' motto. He was, you have to know yourself before you can say something about yourself or about what you even can know. Okay, I added the word even. (laughs) So you have to know yourself before you can say something about yourself or about what you can know. So getting to know your shadow side with compassion and acceptance is the beginning of self-knowledge. If you know what your strengths and weaknesses are, you're better able to use effective self-care methods and to know where and how to set healthy boundaries. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? And as you start to know yourself better, you know, asking what do you want and who are you and what are your values, then take time to ask yourself, what are your preferences? What are the things that you're willing to negotiate about? And finally, what are deal breakers? You know, relationships require a give and take. That's why we do have to be aware of what we want to negotiate or what are merely preferences. And um, deal breakers, of course, are relationship breakers. But understanding your own preferences and what is worth negotiating for and what your non-negotiable deal breakers are is an important starting point for you as you begin to decide what your boundaries are. When someone is crossing your boundaries and it feels like someone is invading your space or not not acknowledging your needs, whether deliberately or unconsciously, first take a moment to practice radical self-love and in curiosity and compassion for yourself, name what's going on for you. Notice how their words or actions are affecting you. Do you have an uncomfortable feeling in your body? Do you feel confused? Are you noticing any sort of fight, flight, or freeze response? You know, like with a fight, maybe you're getting angry, or if you feel like flight, maybe that's telling you you want to get out of there, or freeze, is your mind going blank? Noticing these type of responses. And as you notice the bodily and emotional responses you're having, Realize this is your inner wisdom trying to get a message across to you. Again, you can use Gabor Mate's Compassionate Inquiry or Janina Fisher's methodologies to uncover what those messages are for you. And just sitting with them and asking them as well. I mean, if you don't want to go into like... um a prescripted thing just sit there and ask and wonder like what is going on what am i noticing what do i see what do i feel 
Where is my feeling this in my body? What are my thoughts? Am I having feelings about like anger and um, fear or disgust or whatever it might be? You know, it's really interesting that with this knowledge, this deep self-knowledge, you are able to carry yourself with a type of confidence. And this is what begins the process of creating healthy boundaries. So the first step is being compassionately curious about your own inner feelings and fears. The compassionate acceptance of your own self. The next is to develop curiosity with compassion for others. So the next step is to be curious about who and what the other person is about. Notice what is important to them and where they're coming from. You can tell what's important to them by what they're saying. If they complain about something t you did or like maybe you were late for a coffee date and they got angry at you, you can say, ah, I can see it's important to you for people to be on time and then move on into a conversation. Or people can be more invasive and ask personal questions you don't want to discuss with them, or they may offer unsolicited advice. In this case, note, you may notice the motivation behind their question, such as a desire to be helpful or to be supportive, and then comment on their desire. Ah, I see you really want to be helpful. You really care about me. And then express your boundary. But I really just don't want to talk about this right now. And change the subject. If they are normal, basically kind-hearted people, and not boundary destroyers that I will talk about later, they will usually let it go and honor your desire. Although sometimes it takes a few repetitions to get it through their heads, especially if they are older family members who feel they have the right to be invasively all up in your business. Well, they don't have to be older. Sometimes kids can be that way too. Mm -hmm. By using compassionate awareness of the other person, noticing what's important to them, it helps them to not feel attacked and to feel understood and seen. And it helps to reduce the uncomfortable feelings. Like I mentioned in the intro, Stating your boundaries may put a strain on the relationship that wasn't there before. And of course, this isn't your intention. So use your self-knowledge of preferences, negotiables, and deal breakers and experiment with expressing your desires. In normal relationships, more often than not, the other person is willing to work in cooperation and collaboration with you. Although if they disagree and say no, then we need to remember that's not a reflection on your worth, but it's part of the whole dance of interacting with another unique human being. A little side note, making demands of other people is not boundary making. Making demands is antithetical to cooperation and collaboration, and these two things are necessary to get needs met in a healthy way. So back to the other person. Often others, I should say by the way, often others experience the same types of inner conflicts and lack of self-knowledge. When someone is crossing your boundary, often it's really them acting from their own unexamined shadow parts. This, of course, doesn't excuse their behavior but sometimes we can tell they are genuinely good people who really don't have a clue. And then we can use the compassionate understanding and notice, ah, they really want to be helpful. Mm. But they don't realize they're stepping on my toes. On the other hand, if you are in a toxic relationship, the rules do not apply. I like how Terry Cole calls this type of person a boundary destroyer. Because no matter what you say or do, they will persist in boundary destroying behaviors. They disregard other people's boundaries, 
whether consciously or unconsciously, unconsciously, overtly or covertly, partly because they feel like they are above the limits. These are the people who feel entitled to your time, your care and attention, and are not concerned with reciprocity. If you are in a relationship with someone like this, your safety is the most important consideration. Please seek professional support or guidance. And I, I will go more in depth in a future episode on the dynamics of boundaries, etc. with this type of relationship. I'd like to leave you today with The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. They are beautiful in their simplicity and amazing directness and are a great basis for creating healthy boundaries. The first agreement is, be impeccable with your word. Next, don't take anything personally. Third, don't make assumptions. And finally, always do your best. Thank you for listening. And please like and share if you enjoy this podcast. Bye for now. Looking for the light, it's a daily fight and things go bump in the night. The news of the day is outrageous, that's what the mad folks say. Who told you that you had?